So, Mr. Henry from El Local, you are in. Thanks for coming. Thank you so much for this invitation. Hey, it's my it. pleasure. Um, the El Local story is interesting to me, and I'm looking forward to talking with you. So, please introduce yourself and let's get rolling. Okay, muy bien. Uh, my name is Henry. Uh, I am the chef and manager of the local. Um, I also work with uh, Special and George. George is uh, my boss. And Special is uh, my confident friend, and she always guides me through the best way I can manage the restaurant. I believe that. Spacio, when she did, recorded her podcast here, I really enjoyed that episode. Yeah. She, oh, she spoke from her heart. Like yeah. she. <laughs> <laughs> See, well, she's like a really confident friend, um, and she always has like secrets, spices. When I'm making like new recipes or, or new stuff, um, I always go to her and ask her, like, do you have like this? Some I cumin? <laughs> she comes with the, with the, with the jars and, and, and spices and that stuff. And she always have everything. She's always ready for any situation. Yeah. yeah she's been through a lot. Well, shout out to her, um, and George for that matter. So how long have you been at a local? Uh, let's see. April 2018. So that means almost two years. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's starting to show because El Local has always been a, a little bit different menu, but the restaurant was not, when it first launched, it was not as consistent in the past as it is now. So what are you doing? Why is the place starting to work, work so much better? Like what, what what's happening? One of the keys or one of the most important thing all my life is a, uh, George gave me the trust. He trusts on my word. And, and, and we talked before I was running the restaurant. Um, I told him what I really want to make. Um, if I go to the past, I remember when I was eight or nine years old, my mom uh, taught me how to bake. So when I was in the school, I was baking some bread or cakes and sell it to my friends. So it, it kept me <laughs> into the business and it was like nine years. So, so you've been I doing this a long time. <laughs> yeah. I understand people necessities and what the people want. And I start like trying to study people or analyze people. Um, so that's, just, that, that, that the thing. Um, George in condition of, um, okay, this is the restaurant. Let's try to do something really nice. He gave me the concept, but he really wants to keep working on it. Is the farm to table concept, a uh, free hormones or the grass fed um, idea for the chicken or the cow, the beef we have. Um, and then about the craft beers and the kombucha. Uh, so trying to bring that um, concept to the people that we are making everything from the scratch. We are not using pre prepared food. Right, we're making our own sauce. We are making our own own almond milk, own coconut yogurt. So it, it takes when you prepare something like that it takes more than one day. Um, this is the case for the tuna burger. It's, people could think, ah, it's tuna burger, but it took me six months to get the flavor, to get the in ingredients, or why I'm using the belly from the tuna. Um, and the, and keeping cooking and making some tests and it's really nice because when I cook, I am the first person who tries is spe special or my staff and I just want the feedback, right? Or if you are around, maybe you can try one of those plates. So basically, it's that. Um, what else? Um, hard work, passion. I like cook. I mean, I, I like being behind the kitchen, making new recipes, taking care of the people. And it's more than that. It's um, nutrition, uh, wellness. So part of the idea is you come to my restaurant and you will feel great eating my food because I do not add anything like artificial products. It's just a concept that you are eating healthy food, right? Um, our greens is from a person in, in Atenas, 
and he keep like really clean products, same as Grassfit is the company we're using for for beef. Um, I'm, I'm I'm always in the in the kitchen taking care. What do the girls do, right? Like trying to keep that clean idea. Um, people like it. <laughs> That's great. So it's kind of inspiring that you pulled it off because it's more expensive. See, and it's much more difficult to get suppliers. But George is is committed, and you've just brought it up to another level. The whole farm to table concept and, and organic and and everything's prepared in house. So respect. More than that is trying to guide the people who work with me and teach them what is the idea. Sometimes, as, as we talked before, uh, people just come to work and get some money for whatever they do. It's not that. It's my idea or my my, my uh, proposito, uh, mm -hmm. purpose, mm -hmm. more than be uh, running a restaurant, is teach people what do they can eat and how benefit is. Try mm. the vegan burrito. It's not just vegetables, right? It's, it's more than that. It's nutrition. It's like you can eat that and feel great the rest of your day. It's, you're not getting like angry stomach, mm. right? Like almost that heavy part. No, it's not like that. It takes me one month to make the vegan burrito <laughs> because I really want to bring people something nice and, and delicious and and an experience. Is, is that the thing? So you so. said it, it takes a long time for you to create these items. So a month for a vegan See. burrito, six months for a tuna burger. What See. else? Um, well, like give us a couple examples of how you created some of your favorite dishes. Well, what I, what I do is I'm reading. I'm always reading the books. I'm always looking in the internet how the food works in your body, how I can bring this experience to people once they come. When when they come in the morning and and drink the smoothie, I try to make some alchemist. Uh, combinations and um, people get comfortable with that. Like green juice is not that more than green juice. It's like you can put in a mix pineapple, kale or whatever. But if you add an extra cardamom or if you add an extra uh, Himalayan salt, you get better. So you can boost your body. You can alkal alkalinizar mm -hmm. uh, your blood, right? It's no more like you're. I'm feeding you and um, I don't take care of you. It's not that. If you come to my restaurant, is um, I'm taking care of you because I prepared this and takes me six, take me one month making this recipe, drinking all the green smoothie every morning. How I feel like, how it long takes me um, feel better or lose some weight or lose fat. That's the idea of the local, basically, bring you wellness. So right it's what I like. I mean, it's, it's part of my, it's part of my life. Um, it's part of my project also. So, um, I waste a lot of time reading books and looking at internet, how the chemicals or how the chemicals alimentos mm -hmm. works into your body. So I'm not like, I'm not a vegan person. Uh, I eat regular food, but I'm taking care of my health. So I bring you my experience through my food to you. So what are your favorite <laughs> dishes at El Local right now? Uh, let's say up to five. Uh, let's see. Uh, Thai tuna burger is one of my favorites. Um, margarita pizza, basic. Uh, a local burger, for sure. Um, the vegan burrito, I like it. <laughs> what sauce do you put on it? Yeah, that's a sweet chili sauce we make. Uh, we put it in the grill and, and we add some ingredients and tastes really good. Looks creamy. Uh, people think we have some milk uh, on it, but we, um, we prepare like a cauliflower sauce. Um, we start cooking it and we give that consistency. People, vegan people look for that cheesy or meaty. So part of my work is trying to bring that a texture in your mouth mm. you're looking for so vegan folks a vegan burrito what else would vegan folks enjoy there a vegan risotto uh it's a it's a recipe that need that needs some improve now <laughs> you need to get better how about your buffalo cauliflower that's oh popular. that one is good see <laughs> um it's a 
That's a George creation, basically. That's he a likes. good idea. Sí, sí, sí. He likes it. I like it not much, but I prefer the chicken wings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Yeah. I wish you guys had like that, um, the sauce that you just described, the, the, what do you call it? Sweet, spicy Thai sauce or what is it called? If for the one the, that you do for your wings. Like if you get like. Ah, the sambal. It's good. The spiciest one. I, I like both of them. I like the one that's kind of sweet and I like the spicy one. Yeah, yeah. I wish you had a chicken sandwich with that because it's so good. Like that's. See, see, well, we have that's a chicken sandwich. I would like to put it into the buffalo sauce in some moment. I think that'd be a good hit. <laughs> see, I'll be there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good one. So <laughs> tell us, let's, let's look into you though. So your background, you've been cooking your whole life. You're really interested. You're really interested in health and wellness. You also play music. Uh, tell us a little more about you because most people who work at a restaurant are are trying to, let's just say, improve a restaurant, work all the time. So I do. What's the story with you? Uh, let's see. Um, I just came seven years ago uh, from San Carlos. That's the central west of Costa Rica where the cowboys are. Yeah. <laughs> um, I came from a medium, um, how do you say, como middle class? Middle class family. Um, I was the oldest, a, the only boy in the family. I have three sisters. Um, so since I was a kid, I took many responsibilities to be the, the man in the house. My and you mom, were baking at eight years old. Yeah. Uh, my mom was always working. My father also was always working. So there should be somebody responsible. Uh, my mom had had the, the, the idea to teach me how to cook, to take care of my sister. We have some nannies, but she wants like somebody like really take care of, of, the, of, the, of the daughters. Uh, so I start have this responsibility about people and how feed people and how make money from the food and how get better every time. So uh, I start study English at INA like for two years and that bring, bring, bring me, move me to uh, start working in tourism. So I've been doing this for 11 years actually. Okay. So I moved to La Fortuna is one of the points in Costa Rica uh, for tourism. And I start meeting the right people in the right moment. And I'm always interesting about the food. Um, I was always meeting, um, chef people. Um, 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 I was cooking for some friends. I'm, I'm always involved into the kitchen. When I was a 19 years old, I was, I was running my own pizzeria. <laughs> Uh, so that was the beginning. So this, this sounds like this is just who you are. You really are passionate and this has just become a part of your life from when you were a little boy. You're in the kitchen cooking, trying things out nonstop. See, uh, at the beginning was all uh, experiments, like disgusting experiments. <laughs> What's the worst thing you ever made? <laughs> uh, I could remember. <laughs> I could remember now um, pork cinnamon rice I made. <laughs> That's horrible, man. <laughs> What's your least favorite menu item at El Local? What's the one you just don't want to eat? You're like, I don't want that. The vegan risotto. The vegan risotto. And you're a meat eater, so. See, sí. see, sí, see, sí, see. Sí. I'm always looking for the cheese and the uh, heavy cream. I gotcha. <laughs> so at your house, though, away from the restaurant, what's the most common food that you make for yourself? I live in the restaurant. So, so you don't need uh, to. No, no, no. What I have in my house is a lot of fruits uh, and then breakfast food. And for Eggs. breakfast, you just make your super tico. Yes. Pretty much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So no, but when I, when I'm in home, I just prepare like, um, some eggs and coffee and eat some fruits and stay around. It's no, it's not a big deal. Uh, now I have a daughter, so I have to keep like more healthy food for her. Um, and, and, and that is the part. I'm taking care of the health mm. now. Um, I am more concerned what I'm, what I'm eating and what I can give her to get her healthy. How old so, is your daughter? Uh, she's one year and four months. So it's a pretty exciting time. She's starting to move. She already walked. <laughs> she's walking around and getting the guitar and play with the 
uh, effects and that stuff. Yeah, oh, she's boy. amazing. You just brought back a memory yeah. from my son, <laughs> Elisha, when he when he was little, he crawled around and went to an amplifier and turned it all the way up. Uh -huh. And I didn't know he had done that. So I plugged in one time and started what? playing. <laughs> Yeah, she's yeah, amazing and so intelligent and clever. Um, she's like sparkle of my life. Does she like you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> <The reason, laughs> I think so. <laughs> the reason I'm asking is my daughter, her first year, she didn't really like me. In serio? No, oh. she, she just wanted to be with her mom all the time. Ah, well, she had like that's... her mom's hair in her hand and she just like bite it. And it was all mom for right. like that first year. And then around two, three when we could start talking more, that's when it started working, once we could communicate. Well, w when I stay at home, uh, I really like stay with her alone. Uh, staying at the restaurant and running a restaurant takes, takes you more time than you think. Friends, family, uh, your personal life. So uh, when I stay at home, I try to take care of her, like making some breakfast, uh, eat for together or cooking something for her and take her away. Does outside. she dislike any of your food yet? Mm, I would like to prepare more food, but mm, her mom do not allow me. I got you. <laughs> like, and like lamb curry. I would like to give her like lamb curry. I can't wait till you like <laughs> give her something that you like think is so great. And she's mm. like, nah. <laughs> uh, but she likes pizza. Of course <laughs> she likes pizza. Um, what else? She likes chocolates. Um, yeah. It's just a fun time. Congratulations. Sí, sí, sí. Yeah. Gracias. That's really cool. All right. So what are you doing for fun? Cook. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cooking for me is um, my own space. Uh, it's the best way I can tell people how much I love them. Uh, when If you stay around to the restaurant anytime... I will take care of the food and how the plate is going to be served because a uh, cooking is a, uh, an expression of the soul. No matter if you cook well or not, it's just the idea. Okay. To take care of your body. I like your hippiness to your cooking that this is an expression of your soul. What if you just get a frozen pizza and put it in the oven? Is How much soul work is involved in that? Not that much. Okay. For me, not that so, much. Next question. <laughs> so how much soul work is in doing the dishes? Well, sometimes I waste all the night awake um, thinking on recipes and how I can get it better. Um, sometimes I can't sleep. When I'm making some new recipes, you will see the menu now at local, but I'm still working in new recipes. Let's hear Every what's com day. what's coming down the pipe. What's gonna be new? What are you working on right now? Truffle lobster risotto with lobster from Garza. Sounds fancy. See, um, one of the things I offer George is take the restaurant to the ne next level, make it no no gourmet, but nice uh, experience. Uh, I'm still working with the lamb. Um, last week I make I made a um, smoked lamb sandwich and was successful. <laughs> um, um, I really want to add something like Indian food or um, create a new concept of the of a restaurant, like bring people a seat to table idea, right? Um, I'm trying to read about the the bluefin tuna situation and and try to get local products from the Garza Beach or the Guiones part of the Manglar and people bring that stuff to the kitchen and, and can make something really nice. Well, that's uh, part of, part of your concept, a, a locale. It is. It is, is sourcing it is. things locally as, as much as you can. Sí, exacto. Now, how do you keep your prices? in line because when you start doing all these nice creations that generally means the price point has to go up well what i do is i'm i start reinventing myself reusing products um, making some combinations and why do the eggplant takes that long to cook start asking that stuff like making experiments what we have now and how much cost me if i add any new item into the menu so bring the people 
with the same products, different flavors. Hmm. So it takes long, longer than you think. So that's why you have to keep always making something new. Exacto. That's right. Yeah. And also I have a lot of friends. I mean, I have chef friends, um, nutritionistas, um, managers. Some, sometimes I need somebody to a reference, right? Um, I call them or I invite them to the restaurant. Um, could you please tell me if you like this or what else I need to get that flavor? And he gave me that advice and I start to make it. So it's a big change later. And I start teaching the kitchen how I want it um, and get involved in that. So also what I make for fun <laughs> at the beginning of the question is um, I play my guitar, um, while I play my guitar, I, I start thinking of recipes. So I'm always cooking on my mind. <laughs> do you dream? Do you dream about cooking? See, sí. see, sí, see. Sí. All right. So I want to ask you some questions. What's the hardest part about running a restaurant in Nosara? Uh, hardest part: get your stuff into your idea. Explain that, please. Running a restaurant is not just make money. Running a restaurant is when you are not there, your crew should know what you are doing. Uh, that's why part of my commitment is teach the waitresses, the bartender, the kitchen people why we are making this. And sometimes this is a bad part. Sometimes they cannot get involved on this and I need to take them out. Well, well, they have to share. Training happen once a week. I mean, we have uh, meetings. Uh, we have sommelier who come and train us. Um, we have, I mean, I take care of when I'm cooking something, they come to the kitchen and they learn we are making this in this way and how long it takes and this is the flavor. And do you like it? No. Okay, this goes with this wine, this goes with this beer, this goes with this kombucha. You cannot mix it up or you're out, right? So that's the hard part. Share the vision and then they believe in you and show the people that vision. At the beginning, uh, I was working as a waiter in a local, a head waiter. Um, and I, I always hear from the waitress in that moment, I don't know. Why you don't know? If, if you work here, right? If you do this every day, why you don't know? <laughs> you should know. So I start worrying about it. Uh, okay, why am I doing this? Why the carnage grape goes really good with this beef? Why the Malbec goes really good with the wings? Why? So I start training the girls um, to bring this thing to the, to the guest. Um, and also sometimes at the beginning, they put a lot of food in the trash or they do not reuse products. I'm making new stuff. It's what I'm doing now. Um, at the beginning, when, when, when I take care of the tuna burger, this is a really nice experience because I was always buying tuna and buying tuna and buying tuna and trying the recipe, trying. Um, sometimes the patty get like um, crumbles. Exacto. Uh, so I start reading again, how the Japanese food get these flavors? Why the Japanese food use the belly from tuna? It's because of fat. So let's use the belly from the tuna because the belly used to go to the trash, right? So I'm reusing the tuna belly to make the tuna burger. So it tastes better, right? So that kind of things is what I'm showing my, my crew. Um, how they can reuse products. And um, sometimes it's hard to try <laughs> them. Um, this idea. Um, now they are more concerned and they take care of the products. Um, if something is wrong, like grocery, like mangoes, potatoes, uh, two years ago, they do not take care. Like eh. now they take it back to the provider and I cannot accept this. Please change it. So it's a big challenge. It's a big challenge every day because I have 15 people working with me, 15 people who, with different mo moods, uh, <laughs> temperaments. 
Uh, so what's that like dealing with the personalities inside of a restaurant that's moving fast? One first thing is delegate. Um, it's something I learned from George. Uh, I'm, I, I am his employee, but also uh, he sees he see me he sees me as a partner of business. So that responsibility, like taking care of something, is not yours, but at the same time, it's yours because I have the the freedom to choose whatever I want into the into the restaurant. Is the same option I give to my crew. So you have the option to do a really good job and you have to do this to get this. Um, when I back, I hope to get it done. That's it. Easy uh, communication, communication and be educated. I, I'm not that kind of person like screaming like crazy. Two years ago, yes, but now no. <laughs> I start to be more patient mm. uh, and do not take anything personality. Uh, do not take anything personal. Um, sometimes I get it so stressful because I do not get the waitresses doing their work how it should be. But now, with the experience of the first year at the local and getting the idea and getting the form and make it work, now I just delegate some functions. And good for you. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. That probably makes life a lot more pleasant. Exacto. Sí, sí. Yeah, it makes sense. All right, so in, in Nosara, let's talk about some other restaurants. Nothing about locale. I want to know your three favorite restaurants that you like to eat at and what you like to get there. Woof. Um, ceviche at Harmony Hotel. Okay, Harmony Ceviche. Uh, did you try Costa? Where Not was, yet. Where was Tividao? Well, I've heard about a- it. Stefan from Blue Spirit. That was his answer to this question. Uh, Luis Proti is a really good chef. And he's doing a really good job. What do you like to get there? <laughs> Everything. So you really like Costa. Sí. That's a big endorsement. So, all right, what's number three? Number three? Mm-hmm. Actually, you know what? You can have two more because you're a cook and a chef. So keep going. Okay, muy bien. Nice. Uh, well, number three, I like the... the the cheese dessert at Pacifico, um, flan de queso, de queso, or can't remember. Is that the Pacifico as well? Uh huh. Okay. It's the, the flan de queso. El flan de queso they have. I like it. Nice. <laughs> um, what else? What else? What else? I have a lot of places now. There's a lot of restaurants here. Mm. Um, I like the pizza from Pura Pizza. <laughs> All right. <laughs> right on. <laughs> y finally, I can say the coffee of Ololaya. I like the coffee. They Shout make. out to San Diego. Sí. San- Santiago. <laughs> Shout out to Santiago. He came on the podcast and I learned a lot from him because he is about creating an experience. Like, and he meant it. Like, that's something, like, people would just kind of say. You're like, ah, whatever. He really means it. Like, he is trying through that product he's creating. He wants you to have an experience, and it's part of, like, your being. And it sounds even weird to say it, but he feels it, man. And what you're saying is kind of similar. You cook. You said that's how you – it fills your soul. Is that what you you said? That's a big statement, man. I'm happy cooking. That's the thing. That, that is la cosa. So I'm happy. I'm happy cooking for people. Um, make me feel better when I make something for for, for them. For me, um, take care of of, of people. Um, also, I just remember um, I like coffee from Odalaya. But remember, at the local we have our own coffee roast roaster. Yeah, is Enrique from. Shout out to Enrique. 88 Coffee Nosara um, is the coffee we use at the restaurant. Man, it's, speaking of Enrique, uh, and special t- talk about multiple talents. They do chocolate and coffee. 
Jiu-jitsu now. Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> but but he's he's gung ho. Like he's really going hard. Sí, 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 sí. He's yeah. really going hard, and the chocolates are they're good. Yeah, like the peanut it. butter ones is yeah. pretty awesome. Yeah. Sí, bueno. Eso es, uh, basically, uh, when I came here seven years ago, I started working at the Harmony Hotel as a reservation agent. Um, then I worked at Blue Spirit with uh, Jatsu, uh, Don Stefan. Uh, I get more involved in operations. So every time I got a new work in the past, I tried to learn the best. And it's the thing I'm using now. When I met chef people, it's a, it's a shame I didn't bring. I have a blue book. I call it my Bible when I write every idea when I'm talking with chef. So I write it down. When I met Ivo, like, like two years ago. Yeah, rest in uh, peace. Yeah. Um, I waste a lot of hours talking with him about recipes. And sometimes took us until 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. talking about food. Um, then he moved away. Um, but every time... I go into internet, I go into YouTube, I go into my books, I try to write everything. So I can lose my cell phone, I can lose my car, but not my book. It's a reference. <laughs> and I walk in the restaurant with the book. You better guard that thing, man. <laughs> sí. Someone's going to hear this and go steal your blue book. <laughs> no, I'm, they can't understand my letter. So I It's like in doctor language. Yeah, like sí. it, It's like more like a possession. Like <laughs> <laughs> that's cool so what hmm, what I was going to say what do you do for fun I guess you've talked about that well I, I go and train at um, I do some weights or workout yeah, you're, you're a big guy so yeah. you like to so, lift or do you see, like to train or I used to train Muay Thai um, cool many years ago I get I get some injuries I can't see very well in my right eye was it an elbow uh -huh. And then my shin, is, my leg, my knee, my uh, shoulder is not a really good one. Isn't so. that the good and the bad of Muay Thai? Because if you train, I mean, you, as soon as you bring in knees and elbows, those are those are hard and they cut. Well, if you like pain. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's, if, well, I had my daughter like pain, training at Nalu with the melon. Muay Thai I for lose a long some time. teeth. Oh. <laughs> it's... It's a very effective fighting style, but it's bad to practice. See, 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 see. How about jujitsu? Are you are you into that at um, all? I'm so terrible at jujitsu. <laughs> I am like <laughs> like a total eh, patas para arriba. So heavy for that. I think I'm so heavy. Probably yeah. not. Well, it's probably, I from, try. probably from lifting. Yeah. Yeah. Big mus big muscles are bad for surfing. See, I've learned. See, see, see. That's right. It's a. Uh, I would like to learn how to surf. I can't. <laughs> You're gonna sing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm. I'm. I am like an alligator in a surfboard, like super tieso, quizás. Like, hmm. all right. Well, I'll bring you a big board. Yeah, no, bring maybe, me a boat. Maybe need to work on that. <laughs> bring me a boat. <laughs> okay, I'll bring you a boat. You bring me a chicken sandwich. <laughs> yeah, we'll call it even. <laughs> That's a good deal. Yeah, really good deal. <laughs> oh man. All right, so. Yeah, don't go back to Muay Thai if you've already no 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 busted no. your eye out and lost I, I, teeth. I just want to run when when I when I'm gonna be in my sixties. <laughs> <Right? laughs> I, I want to run with my daughter. So you um, watched the fights this last week? See, si. what'd you think? I like Cerrone. <laughs> I like Cerrone too. He lost. He lost quickly. Do you think it was fixed? No, 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 no. Why fixed? Well, I'll answer the question because. McGregor makes the company so much money and all the fighters want to fight him because they make a lot more money. And Donald Cerrone's always been a, a company man. Whatever the UFC says, he does. If they're like, fight here, he's like, I'll take it. He's known for that. Hmm. So if somebody went to Cerrone and said, hey, here's a couple million bucks, just take another butt kicking. And he's, he does that all the time. So people think there's so much money involved that maybe it was worth it for him to do it. Now, I'm not saying I, I agree with that. I'm just telling you. Some people do. Like before we went to bed that night, my wife's like, Cerrone's going to take a fall. They're, he's going to lose really fast. McGregor just is too much money. And we woke up to check the fights. I, I, I couldn't stay up for that one. It was in Las Vegas. Hmm. So the time zone when it started here was late. But when I woke up, sure enough, 40 second knockout. And she's like, told you. 
Now, I don't know if she's right or not. I'm just saying that's like a, a big talking point right now. Could be. Could be. Uh, you know, biz- business is business. Yeah. Holly Holm won a tough fight. You like Holly Holm? I like her. She's scary to me. I, my daughter she looks like you, her. When your mom is angry and waiting for you, you did <laughs> oh something gosh. bad in your house. Like, <laughs> like moving in the, in the, in the ring. I like mm. her. She's explosive. So are you guys going to start showing the fights up at a locale or sometimes? Every Saturday. I hope so. Um, yeah, we have more and more events during the week. On Mondays, we have some promos with the pizza, with the wings, with the, with the beer. Tell Margaritas. us real quick, what, what are your promo days? Okay, Monday is the Happy Monday. <laughs> okay. Uh, we have uh, pizzas is $10, wings, eight, cauliflower bites, six. Um, the margaritas is two for one. Um, Thursday, we have the, the Thursday burger. Um, I will emblematic burger is $8. Uh, and then I'm, I'm still like working with the live music events, but on Sunday, we have Santos who plays the guitar and he does really good job. Um, he's really good. He's a stud. Yeah. I like him. Uh, he, he's also like my mentor with the guitar. <laughs> nice. And every time I have a doubt, he show me. I don't play that well, pero, pero he's good. Um, and then during the low season, we have a happy hour, but probably I will show later what we're gonna have. I gotcha. Yeah. Well, that's cool. So the main things right now, I guess you said Monday and Saturday you have the music. Thursday you have something as well, and then Sunday you have mm-hmm. music. Yep. All right. Got it. Yeah. So. Where do you eat tacos at here? Do you ever eat tacos? Yeah. The reason I'm asking is because people ask me a lot, where should I go to get tacos? And you have Taco Tuesday. It used to be Harbor Reef and El Chivo. Now I guess you have, what's the place in front of the Harmony called? Sunset. Ah, uh, El Chile. Dad, it. Oh, Dad, give it. Is it called El Chile now? What's it's it El Chile in front of Harmony. All right. So I'm going to ask the question. They this have way. like a, this um, burrito, costilla borracha. Ooh, with the green tomato sauce. Oh, eso bueno. That's Cookie's favorite thing. <laughs> sí, es demasiado bueno. Yeah, I like it with stout. I got you. <laughs> I got you. So you have, <coughs> excuse me. So you have a pretty open mind about other restaurants. You're not super judgmental or like everybody stinks. No, no, no. Just my food. No. I've noticed a lot of chefs don't do not like to eat at other places at all. Why And not? It's just a restaurant. <laughs> I don't know. I was going to ask open. you that question. <laughs> I'm open. I, Actually, I invite everybody, like every manager of the Kilodiwana or Al Chile or Harmony to come to my restaurant and try what we're making, right? It's just change a little bit. It's like if you go into Indian restaurant cuisine and you're not eating curry because you don't like curry. It's something like that. About tacos, uh, I would like to have a food truck that offer really good tacos with the tacos al pastor and and just take it take it right in the parking area yeah open people, between 10 p.m to 2 a.m well that's what's cool when people do offer specials like when you guys do the discount nights or if they're here's my point there's not a it, it i'll say it this way i'll just be i'll just spit it out it's expensive to eat in osara it sí. costs a lot of money so anytime people can do something that's quick and fast like Well, it's expensive, uh, especially in Proyecto Americano, right? Uh, we have to pay rent. I have to pay taxes. I have to pay planilla, staff, extra hours as I prepare everything from the scratch. So the jerk chicken is not just fried chicken. No, 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 no. It takes six hours to prepare the jerk chicken. And um, sometimes I get mad people at the restaurant because they came from the jerk chicken And they don't get it. <laughs> and they get really mad. Like, I just came from try the jerk chicken. It takes longer than you think. Sometimes we don't have tuna. Sometimes we don't have the sea bass. Because I prefer have fresh food than frozen food. And give you quality. Freshness. It's the concept of the restaurant. Or why you don't have Imperial or Pilsen? It's one of the most common complainings. It's not the idea of the restaurant. Florida, they just made their work. Right? <laughs> you have to pay for that. 
<risa> me hice <risa> sponsor. Man. Pero. Um, I would like invite people to come to my kitchen and see what we are doing is not just to fill you up. It's more concerned about how you're going to feel when you eat my food and how I take care of your health. Why we put ginger on this? Why we put turmeric on this? Why we use extra garlic in the tuna burger? Uh, why the, 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 the ground beef is grass fed, right? Why the greens looks like that so smaller? I want to give this, um, I want to invite people to come and see it. Why? Is because I believe if I take care of you, you take care of me, right? And it's a mutual, it's un acuerdo mutuo, right? We share the vision. So how do you think things are going in Osara? Is it growing too fast? Is it doing well? Like, uh, what, what's your opinion? It's growing fast. Uh, this year, restaurants, we have like four new restaurants. At least. Um, that means one thing is a lot of people in town or there is more competence. <laughs> right. So you have to bring this experience or why I have to go a local and not Brazas or not Al Chile. Why? I don't want to offer the same products that you're having in Al Chile. I don't want to offer the same products that you have La Costa. So bring different experience and work all together for the same idea. The concept. I get you. Right? Now, as far as the town goes itself, though, our, our roads, our infrastructure. I hope so. I've like, been hearing this for seven years. We're getting the pave. Finally. So you're a fan. You, you like the idea of the asphalt. Yes. Why not? I mean, I don't want to waste every three months, like $6,000 to pay my car to reparations. Right. Eventually, whatever you have to drive to your work. Uh, is a truth the the road is a disgusting road and why you have you why you have to waste a lot of money repairing your car <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a big damage to your pocket right you, <laughs> you, know, you work all the high season and saving money <laughs> to repair the car for low season oh no 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 that happens to me yeah man and i would i always say our negatives are crime cars and electronics in that order Crime, because crime, well, crime's never fun. When you're on vacation and you get robbed, and that's a big yeah, but it's, it's been happening frequently, right? It comes and goes in waves. Like right now, we're in the middle of a crime wave See? right now. Then it's going to go quiet, and everyone will kind of forget, and they'll let their guard down. And then every couple months, it really, it comes and it goes. Yeah. So, it, it, but it's it consistent, happen. and it doesn't, it doesn't not go away. The yeah. only way we'll stop crime is if we get private security. For sure. That's it. That's simple. Like, a, yeah, there's really not even all that much to talk about anymore. It's that simple. If we get we private have, security. We should have like a free Muay Thai and Jiu-Jitsu course <laughs> in every town and defense ourselves when somebody's inside a That's house. That's a good idea, but it's so hard to catch the thieves here. They're like ghosts. Yeah. They like, they don't get caught. When? Anyway. Try with the private security. So crime stinks. Uh, cars, because of everything you said, our road is atrocious. Um, it's comical how bad it's, it is. It's, that's it's unfair, right? It's nuts. I pay Marchamo, I pay retail, I take care of my car. But the road is disgusting. Takes all your money. You have to work an extra. You need nine days a week instead of seven, so you can make enough money to pay for your car. Nah, it's a it's a it's a big topic that right. Mm. And electronics because you can't get. There's not an Apple store around the corner internet. Like if, uh, this yeah. town is always collapsing with internet yeah it's but hey you know what it's better than it used to be like i remember when the internet was a it was like 10 minutes to send one email and then it got a little better oh gosh we didn't use to have cell phones till not that long ago hmm. like the cell phone coverage that we had there were like three or five places in town that had reception like at five points that's right you could go park there. That's right. Like that happened talking. to me when I came. One spot on the beach in Guillaume. I had to like, change the cell phone. I used to have an iPhone and then I bought a Blackberry because it was the only one who have signed at Harmony Hotel. 
<laughs> and now they don't even exist anymore. <laughs> ah, yeah. yeah, the internet's been a challenge. Yeah. All right, so on that subject, what do you dislike? Hold on, let me say it this way. What do you like the most about Nosara? Tell us quickly. Uh, the contrast between beach and mountains. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's a good one. And it, the, big, big transition. Yeah, I live in town, so it's the mountain part. And then I work at Lucal. It's just one kilometer, 900 meters away from the beach. And this is really interesting thing is uh, I don't go to the beach really frequently because I get to sleep in the sand. So the sound of the waves makes me sleep like <laughs> so funny. deep. So uh, I, when I go to the beach is when <laughs> I really deserve. Are you sure it's because you just haven't been staying up too late running a restaurant or cooking and you're tired? <laughs> Could be. <laughs> but if you see me in some moment at the beach and you found me like you're asleep. I'm sleeping. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm not gonna take Gisela you. Gisela always get mad of me because she she likes go and she takes me <laughs> the beach to the beach and I get sleep like like three minutes. Woo. That's funny. <laughs> You're always doing that. The uh, kids like run off. Yeah. <laughs> that contrast. I okay, like so that that's what you like. That's that's your biggest draw. And stay away from the city. See. That's the other part. Stay That's away from the city. I go to San Jose like once in a month. Uh, when I just get the 27, <laughs> it's like, uh, and people start beating and they traffic and screaming people. Yeah, and, there's a lot of traffic. And that thing is running, running, running. Bye, 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 bye. And he did it. Um, once I went to the subway, um, and then they did the, La Vendedora, she was mad at me because I didn't order fast. And was I just was seeing what, which, which options I had. Like, okay, fast. Yo, no, no, no. So I'm talking. <laughs> I take care of my sandwich. <laughs> uh, I don't like that. The, the running part. I got you. So do you think aliens exist? Sure. Easy. Um, I'm not the most religion person. But if you want to use a reference, the Bible says we are not from here. Neither God. So you're sticking with yes. <laughs> and you're going biblical. <laughs> well, I believe them. Uh, what I think is um, in our human condition of uh, criticize everything and the human have this ego of nobody can be like them because we are at the top of everything. We start making some ideas or we start making some concept of aliens have three eyes or four fingers or they are short. It's not like that. If we take a, if we see again to the Bible part and the Bible said, these people who came from out there looks like exactly as us, why do the aliens should like look like reptilians or whatever right fair enough check fair enough so i believe them okay um, i hope they come and explode this planet no i'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> then you don't have to work in the your laboratory anymore <laughs> no 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 but there is something really nice um is a uh, goes with the restaurant and, and my idea and my concept and what i do is knowledge mm. e knowledge is more important than, than power with power without knowledge, it's nothing. Um, I try to give my crew some knowledge, what I do, and they are known people. If there was someone in Nosara that you could have a coffee with or just talk to for half an hour or an hour out of everyone, who would you like to talk to? Like, who would you like to sit down and get to know a little more? No, you. <laughs> Well, that's convenient. <laughs> I could come here and hide from the restaurant and play the guitar and drink some coffee. It's a good idea. Them. You are invited to. No worry. Internet <laughs> in. He gets the invite. Uh, pero a uh, person... Uh, Gisela is going to be the first one. Uh, she knows me very well. Um... Luis Proti, 
uh, I have friends, but I don't have that close friends mm. that I can feel free uh, and talk about whatever. Uh, if that person is not like making you or criticizing you, whatever you think. Um, special, for sure. Uh, with Georgie, I prefer drink some beers with Georgie. <laughs> uh, I have a pretty good George imitation. See? You want to hear it? Hey. Oh, mate. I guess. Oh, Henry. Oh, mate. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about this this menu item, Henry. <laughs> See, exactly. I don't know about this. Sure? I know you. I know you've worked hard on this, but mm -hmm. I don't. I don't know if this <laughs> is. Like, I don't know if we're gonna work. <laughs> yeah, he's now really in into the vegetarian and vegan. Yeah, let's talk about that for a second. I was George's new restaurant, Nomu. I wish it was here. I would love to go to that. I, I would, let's go. <laughs> it's kind of far away. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it costs a couple dollars. Man, I got your problem. I got to be around work. I can't. I can't leave for that long. But as far as the Impossible Burger, I think it's cool. Anything that doesn't taste bad. Well, mm -hmm. Let me say it this way. Actually, I need to give a shout out to Beach Dog Mike. I don't know if you know Mike very well, but Mike really got into vegan food and kind of transitioned. And he's the first one who made a burger that I could eat that wasn't horrible. That was vegan. He was one of the first podcasts, and I told him, I think vegan food all tastes like a shoe. It's bad. You should have to pay me to eat it because it tastes so bad. And he said, Rich, just hang in there. Like, I'm working on stuff. And he did it. Like, his mini Big Macs are really good. He was the first one to get to me there. And then I went to the States this last year, and I had that Impossible Burger, and it actually tasted like a burger. I was so happy because I grew up eating burgers, but I haven't eaten red meat since 2001. See. So the Impossible Burger brought back all these memories and this taste that I haven't had for almost mm. 20 years now. Remember this. Um, we have fast food because people do not have time to cook. And that means people do not know how to cook. Society goes around the food you're eating, right? Mm -hmm. So we are really, we are what we eat. Yep. Um, I'm not against the fast food. I like McDonald's fries. It's the only thing I tried. <laughs> but your tongue have some um, places. It's connected to your brain. So that make you addictive to some flavors. Right. Um, for the restaurant I have, I tried to break those flavors. Um, Costa Rica... If you go to any Costa Rican house, I don't want to be mean with this. I'm not saying this is happening. Is Costa Rican people only know four flavors. Salt, pepper, cubito magi, the magi thing, square thing, y salsa lisano. So if you change some recipes and add some new stuff. They are like, uy, ¿qué es eso? Or, no, usted solo invento. You're just making experiments. That's going to taste horrible. And I've been making recipes that people do not believe. You're basically your whole life. Exacto. Um, last time, last week, I made uh, Elizabeth, uh, your photographer. Uh, she doesn't like lamp. And I prepared the lamb really well. So she didn't expect she was eating lamb. When she ate it all, I told her. Ha. <laughs> and she didn't know. You got and, her. Yeah. Was she mad at you? So, See? Si, anyway, I don't care. But <laughs> 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 uh, bueno, the thing is, um, the, the, the vegan and vegetarian people, or people do not know how to cook, is that they do not risk and they do not try new flavors and they do not make the right combinations of, of the food, right? Uh, it's, it's what I'm doing at Local. If you try the vegan risotto, probably you're looking for the cheese or the heavy cream part, but it's not that. It's more like tomato and then the risotto, their body rice, and give you an experience what is eating, the vegan idea. 
same as the veggie burger, same as the vegan burrito. If you if you have the chance to try the vegan burrito, flavor is like meat, but do not have meat, and it's going to give you all you need to be the Sounds awesome. It's good. It's amazing. Even you, Mr. Lamb eat, meat eater guy, you like the veggie burrito. Yeah. You, well, you just, stand by it. Yeah. Eat your vegetables. <laughs> hey, what uh, what foods do you not like? It's got to be something. Ah, this uh, pork. Uh, I don't eat pork. I don't eat pork. Um, I like it, but I don't eat it. I'm in the uh, same boat with red meat and with pork. I don't eat either of those, but I remember it and I used to really like it. See? Um, and that, those dishes like frito, they, they make here in Costa Rica, the mm. frito, I use, I used to eat morcilla, that's blood sausage. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Is that what give you your beard? Is like so powerful? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's or the, those are the total legs. Okay. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> 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 Pero let's see, I, I'm just changed my protein, uh, for vegan protein um it's good i feel stronger now hmm. that's or, good yeah seems like everyone reacts differently right yeah i i th i thought it was like a bad option but it's it's a good one that's yeah. cool yeah. so what do you see yourself doing in five years nice question for the next five years well i can't see the future but i have some ideas um El local is going to be the best restaurant, for sure. I'm on it. And I would like to develop a new concept of restaurants in town. Uh, this idea, seat to table, or more vegan options. I like the vegan. Mm, I'm not vegan. I like vegan food. Um, yeah. Two restaurants at the same time. Yeah. And also surf. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even with a boat. <laughs> I'm worried about you falling asleep, though. <laughs> <laughs> But like when I use the little flotadores. Yeah, we're going to get you a life vest. Oh, all right, we have a plan. <laughs> uh, I need to ride a, I need to learn how to ride a mo moat, um, a moto. This is one hey, Monica thing. and Mario have a they teach lessons that's right you should do it yeah they, they were on the podcast a long time yeah. ago man they're they're great i, I you should it. do it yeah i, I saw most of yours uh, of you your can go podcast. with the kids uh kai and elisha like to ride kai, they're pretty good elisha oh my gosh man he 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 loves he loved that lesson like with mr mario he really loved it you should do it okay i will try yeah i man. need i need it i'm trying to give uh people health mm. uh, my father he's a diabetic person so i grew up with limited sugar limited um salt and fat so now i am a father so i'm taking care of my health to take care of my sister health later and as i told you before i want to run at my 60s i want to run at my 70s with my daughter and possible my son or right yep um it, the only way is know what i'm eating mm. right it's it's making magic with your hands be a wizard in the kitchen and using some products to give you health for free oh how do you say wizard in spanish brujo or chaman or alchemist henry a brujo <laughs> <laughs> like Henry the Wizard. This is a, a really nice way to see the life for me. Take it easy. Take care of you. You take care of me. Um, this is life. I want to thank you for coming on. I really appreciate it. And congratulations on your success. Gracias. Muchas gracias. You deserve it. You've worked hard. <laughs> and uh, it's cool to see what's happening over at El Local. And, uh, sure. Everybody's invite to come to the restaurant. Um If you come early, you're lucky. You can see what we are doing during the day. And do not get mad as I don't have tuna or sea bass. 
you now understand is uh, I prefer have fish during two days in no frozen fish, right? <laughs> or have really good chicken or have really good beef. Um, sometimes, because happen, dishes do not go out properly. And that's part of my work to make it look ha better uh, or guide again the kitchen. So it's always is an experiment. Consistency, but changing flavors. Thanks for coming <laughs> on, buddy. Thank you. Gracias.